God said amen. Amen, amen. amen again. Amen. To God our Father, out of one blood you made us all. And we are so delighted that we can call you our Father. Amen. Come on now. Jesus Christ, our elder brother, came from the heart of God. God himself, the Logos, came among us to save us. And to the Holy Ghost, the Paraclete, Numus, the wind, who came to empower us. To each of you, our presiding personality, I want to thank you, Deacon William Gamble, for your diligence and dedication. And I want to thank God for the best, some of the best men on this side of heaven. Amen. Best fathers on this side of heaven. Right here at Ebenezer. Thank you, my brothers. Thank you. God bless you. I want to thank ministers, pastors. Thank you, Reverend Clarence Hilton. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Reverend Leroy McAveen for your diligence and your dedication, who is a star member and one of the founders, enabling founders of the manhood womanhood training. Amen. I want to thank him 34 years ago. God bless you. God bless you. Thank the brother Victor Wesley, our media ministry, who does a superb job. And Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you for the number one choir this morning. God bless you, our deacons. Hallelujah. We love you and we praise God for you. Amen. God bless you. Very happy to see our brother, Brother Billy Sunday Fleming Jr. Amen. He'll be doing our prayer of the offering a little later. All right? God bless you. Thank God for you. Come with us today and let us reason out of God's word, and everyone who's in the in their cars, in the lot, in the parking lot, thank you for your coming on this Father's Day. We want to thank you, our women, for cooking a delicious meal for the men and fathers right after. Thank you so very much, in Jesus' name. Come with us today and let us reason out of God's word. And these words are found in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, recorded by Luke. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, recorded by Luke. <coughs> Luke writes, under the inspiration of God, and also Luke was not a disciple of Jesus while he walked on the earth. He's viewed as a second generation Christian, and he got a lot of his information also from eyewitnesses, those who were there with Jesus. And here he writes Luke chapter 8, verse 31. Luke chapter 8, verse 41, I'm sorry, 41, 41. Luke chapter 8, verse 41. It reads, Now there came a man named Jairus. He was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. I like to lift up this line at the subject, fathers and men who believe, worship, praise, and obey God will always be blessed. Fathers and men who believe, worship, Praise and obey God will always be blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come with thanksgiving, honor, and praise. We praise you for this day. 
nationally known as Father's Day. We thank you for the young man, for the Dobbs in Spokane, Washington, in 1909, wanted to honor his father and fathers and men who were like fathers to boys. And in 1910, this became a national holiday celebrating June the third Sunday. We bless you, O oh God, for men. Thank you, O oh God, for those who may not have children, but yet they were like fathers and were fathers. We bless you now and we praise you now. Touch us afresh. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. I believe that God has placed children on the earth for a divine purpose. If there is anything that can soften the heart of a rough, rigid, tough, cold-hearted, proud, and evil man is the sickness of his little darling daughter or his son. There's something about a father Something about a father. And we can tell basically in a home where there is an absent of a God-fearing, nurturing, God-loving, holy, and devoted, faithful father. Hallelujah. There's something. There's something. As a chaplain with the Department of Corrections, Roughly about 30 years ago, I was volunteering, and we had to do verbatims, interview inmates. And I noticed about 82% of the young men in that prison came out of a home where there was no father. 82%. Some of them say, I don't even know him. If he walked through the door, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know him. We need fathers. We need fathers. And we need men who will mentor boys who do not have a biological father in the house. Thank God for the men that mentored me. And I praise him for it. On the day in the scripture as the Gadarene demoniac was cured, it was the same day that sadness hung over the home of Jarius, who lived in a village called Capernaum. When the sun rose upon the narrow streets, the streets became busy. You could hear the command of the Roman soldiers drilling his troops. But in one house, in a Jewish quarter, everything was hushed. People moved on tiptoes. They spoke in whispers. In a little room, there was a father and a mother who were kneeling by the bedside of their only child, who was a daughter. She was only 12 years old. They had been praying almost all night. They'd been watching and hoping. They were praying for the great God of heaven to answer their prayers and to heal their only child, their daughter, the only child she had. 
They were fighting with fears. But when the morning came, Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, decided to do something that he had never done. He heard about Jesus. He knew about Jesus. He heard about the miracles. But he had never gone uh, and had a little talk with Jesus. First thing I see here, I want you to travel with me just for a few moments. And I would like to look at a few things. Come with me for just for a few moments. And together let us see some things that I saw in the scripture about this father. First of all, this father was a high priest of his family. We will never be a father if we are not the high priest of the family. What does the high priest do? Number one, the high priest lead others to the Lord. Mm. God gave us our children God gave us our family, and God gave us ourselves for one distinct purpose, to honor him and to love him with all that we have, all that we are, and love others as ourselves. We are called on as a priest to lead our family to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we are not a priest, we will never be a father. If we have not given God our life, you might have 10 children, but you're not a father. Mm. Next, this man, this father, Jarius, was a provider. He provided for his family. He stayed at home. He was there praying with his wife for their daughter. Hmm. He provided for his family. The word said a man who doesn't take care of his family is worse than an infidel. Worse than a person who's never known God. We have to take care of our family. And then the third, a father must be the protector of his family. He should be the one who gets up and look around, see if things are all right with the family. I spoke with my good friend, Dr. Maxwell E. Bonham, on yesterday. We called each other, he called me. And I said, Dr. E. Bonham, I said, I remember when your wife told me that you were up early in the morning and you were anointing everybody. While the children were sleeping, you took the anointing all and poured anointing all on each child and you prayed for them. And not only that, your wife told me that while she was sleeping, you took that bottle of oil and poured it on her head and were praying for her. And she woke up and she heard you praying for your family. And every father, every father ought to pray for his children and his family, protect them from hurt and harm. This father, Jarius, he believed in Jesus. He believed. But no one knew it. No one knew that he believed in Jesus until his darling daughter was sick. Every father, people ought to know that we are a believer in Jesus. And we have received Jesus as Lord and Savior. Don't wait until something is hurting. Don't wait until you're crippled and can't hardly walk. Don't wait until Satan has shaken your life before we call on Jesus. Yes, Jarius waited 
until his daughter was sick. So he left the synagogue. Mm -hmm. He didn't care. He went out in the street. He did not care what people said about him. He fell down on his knees in front of Jesus and he worshiped Jesus. Why? His daughter was at the point of death. I thank God for children. Some children have led their fathers to Jesus. Nothing else. Only the child. Everybody in Capernaum knew about Jairus. But no one knew that he believed in Jesus until his daughter was at the point of death. Then he confessed it. Jairus looked until he found Jesus. Went up and down the street. He heard that Jesus was in town. He walked here and there. He said, I have to find Jesus now. And he found him and he said, Jesus, second thing I want you to do, it, please, Lord, I want you to come go home with me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jairus never invited Jesus to come to his house. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every father ought to invite Jesus to come to his house yeah. Yeah. before trouble comes on the horizon. Don't wait until you get sick. Don't wait until your prognosis is bleak and diagnosis is bad to call on Jesus. Call on him and invite him. Help mercy Jesus. And say, Lord, come go home with me. Well, uh, I got more to say, but I'm going to close the day. I tell you, if we invite Jesus to our house, our house would be different. If we invite Jesus into our lives, our life would be different. If we invite Jesus, yeah, into our hearts and our heads, our head would be better. We would think better thoughts. And if we invite Jesus in every fiber of our being, God will bless us. God will save us. God will deliver us. I thank God. I thank God. Invite him. Invite him. And, and when Jairus invited Jesus, Jesus went on to Jairus' house. And when he got to the house, hallelujah, he had some people there. They were hired to cry. And what Jesus did, you see, Jesus cannot stand insecurity. He cannot stand falsehoods. So what Jesus did, he put them all out. And Jesus took the three with him, Peter, James, and John, and Jairus and his wife, and went into the girl's room and hear the girl lying on the bed, dead. And all Jesus did is said in Hebrew, Talitha Kumai, which means, my little darling, it's time to get up. And he caught the girl by the hand. And, and the little girl got up out of the silent sleep of death. And fathers, if we live for Jesus, if we follow him and obey him, God will answer your prayer. One day when this body falls and goes to sleep and maybe the Fleming in the lane come and pick up this body. Yeah, embalm this body and uh, yeah, uh, help me Holy Ghost and they lay me out in a silent tomb and, but one day the Lord Jesus will touch this frame of mine uh, I'll drop this mantle of flesh and step out of time into eternity and I'm going home where Jesus is no more sickness no more sorrow no more pain, but every day, every day will be a good day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going home where Jesus is.
Thank you for watching the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church YouTube channel brought to you by the Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church Media Ministry. If you are new to Ebenezer or to our channel, we invite you to become a member of our online community. Subscribe to this channel so you're notified whenever we add new videos. Also, click on the like and share buttons. Go to our website, www.embcmanning.org. There you'll find links to our other YouTube channel, and it would be great if you could subscribe to that one also. Join us via telephone for prayer at 6 a.m. daily and Bible study on Wednesday being at 7 p.m. The number is 712-451-0977, access code 625566-POUND. To give to our church and the media ministry, you can go to our website and click on Givelify or mail a check or money order to P.O. Box 728, Manning, South Carolina, 29102. You can also join us in person on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our parking lot services at 105 Dickens Street in Manning, South Carolina. Just park near the church and turn your radios to 96.1. Thank you. May God bless you.